What's up everybody, my name's Chance, and today we're going to be playing a Mono White Gideon's Knights deck. Wonderful, Gideon, Knights, smash and face, what can I say? This deck is, uh, it's just really fun, it's just so fun. Um, we're looking pretty good, <laughs> we got a pretty solid board state, and it's looking like we're about to go 3-0 with Gideon's Knights. Just, just pummeling people. So yeah, pretty much just as the name uh, implies in that little intro, we're we're gonna be playing Gideon Blackblade and in, uh, in a mono white knight tribal deck. Um, those of you that have been around on the channel for a little bit know that I enjoy knights. I enjoy knight tribals as I feel like knights, knights, vampires, and merfolk are, in my opinion, the best uh, tribals. I'm not saying they're the best um, competitively necessarily, but they're the best in my opinion to have the most fun with. So. Um, yeah, we're just gonna be playing a, a whole lot of nights today So I want to go ahead and start this video off just like I did the other video as I said I want to start doing the outro bit and the intro so people don't have to watch all the way to the end in order to get it So if you enjoy the video be sure to leave a like down below um, and a comment in the comment section if you have any suggestions on how I can uh, improve this deck future decks or past decks and uh, If you're new here consider subscribing we try to try to have fun try to play fun decks um, Usually not so competitive, and uh, I like to give a little pre-warning, or I try to at least, not to to go overboard on spending your wild cards on any of these decks. Most of these decks are thrown together with uh, the cards that I already have. Um, some of the decks, you know, I'll spend my wild cards on, but you know, don't uh, don't go wasting your wild cards if you're a competitive player on some of my jank decks. Is all that I'm trying to say. <laughs> Fun, but are they competitive? You know, I'll, I'll let y'all decide that. So, starting us off, we're going to have two copies of a Johnny's Welcome, and this is just going to help us uh, mitigate how much damage we can really take from aggro, like mono red, uh, mono blue, that kind of stuff. So, it was either add in a Johnny's Welcome or a Revitalize, and a Revitalize essentially just recycles itself, and you're going to gain three life each time, whereas a Johnny's Welcome costs one less, as well as potentially gaining you more than, you know, the six life if you draw out both revitalizes so I don't know but it feels like a better trade-off uh, moving us down we have four copies of Dauntless Bodyguard and it is our first night we can uh, sack Dauntless Bodyguard and give another creature we control uh, indestructible until the end of turn so fantastic comes down as 2-1 uh, we should all know this card by now <laughs> moving us down we have two copies of Sheltering Light now I like playing this card in mono white decks as people just really don't expect it and as a two of, it's it's not going to hurt you that bad. So target creature gains indestructible until end of turn, scry one. So it's essentially a dauntless bodyguard plus scry effect. Um, however, you don't have to sacrifice a creature for it. Moving us down, we have two copies of Baffling End. And I got to say, Merchant's kind of kind of convinced me on this card. It's, uh, it's got some value to it. So most of the time, people won't be spending removal on it just to get the 3-3 three, three green dinosaur you'll probably have other things that they're trying to remove so essentially you're just paying two mana to remove um, a creature with converted mana cost three or less which you know it's magic there's a lot of those if you go up against control obviously this card is going to fall a little bit flat um, but so what <laughs> moving us down we have four copies of knight of grace uh, first strike hexproof from black knight of grace gets plus one if they happen to throw down a uh, black permanent of any kind so yeah, pretty pretty solid two mana knight card. Uh, it does have first strike, so after we buff it up with things like history and all it's gonna be all the better. Moving us down, we have two copies of Paladin of Atonement, and uh, really, I just enjoy this card. I don't think it's a super fantastic knight card, but its effect is very unique, and so I really like it. Um, basically, it reads at the beginning of your upkeep, if you lost life on your previous turn, you're gonna put a plus one plus one counter on Paladin of Atonement, and then whenever it dies, for however much power or toughness, toughness, for how much toughness this card has, you're gonna gain that much life. So, uh, the bigger it gets, the more they want to kill it, obviously. However, the more they don't want to kill it as well. So it's kind of like a catch twenty two. Um, I don't know if that fits in that scenario, actually. I just got to thinking about that. Nonetheless, <laughs> we'll move on to our three drops. Two copies of Banalish Marshall, as I only have two copies. However, it is a human knight for uh, three white mana, which we don't have to worry about um, the specifics of that, as we are playing a mono white deck. So, you know, hey. Um, but then other creatures we control get plus one, plus one. So all of our other knights um, are going to get a little buff. Then we have two copies of Gideon Blackblade, the uh, key card here. 
Now I picked up Gideon the other day and I really just wanted to play him in a deck so yeah here it is. <laughs> we played him in the the elf ball deck and I really enjoyed him and now we're gonna play him in this uh, this Gideon's Knights deck. So as long as it's your turn Gideon is a 4-4 human soldier creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker so you still can use his effects. Um, and then you also prevent all damage that would be dealt to Gideon during your turn. Now I don't know why it has that extra bit of flavor text there considering it says he's indestructible so I don't know why preventing all damage would matter um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's some some reasoning there nonetheless for plus one we can give up to one other target creature we control uh, vigilance lifelink or indestructible and uh, that's obviously great so say we need a blocker we're gonna give them vigilance say we need to give some health because we're up against aggro lifelink say we want to keep our creature around um, indestructible so Fair effect, especially since Gideon himself is already a very, very strong uh, three drop. Just being a four four with indestructible right for three mana, that's uh, that's crazy. Um, and then furthermore, if we manage to get him up to six or rather seven, because we don't want to sacrifice him out necessarily, we can exile a target non land permanent, any non land permanent at that. So fantastic. Moving us down, we have three copies of History of Benalia. Um, for each of the first two steps, you're going to create a 2-2 uh, white knight creature token with vigilance. And then on the third step, all of your knights are going to get plus 2, plus 1. So it's really like a, a huge rally effect for, for your deck here. Then we have three copies of Radiant Destiny. Obviously, when this comes down, you're going to name it for knights. And all creatures we control that are knights, which is all of them, um, except for Gideon, get plus 1, plus 1 as well if we are ascended um, or if we have 10 or more permanents on the battlefield then all of them get vigilance as well and obviously our history banalia tokens already have vigilance um, but all these other knights are going to get vigilance which is just fan fantastic moving us down we have two copies of unbreakable formation this is to try and help you uh fight against things like akaya's wrath or like uh can't think of it now ritual of soot <laughs> there we go so or a cleansing nova uh yeah, it's just to try to keep your units alive, and if you have the damage with this, um, because it does give all your units a plus one, plus one counter if you cast it in your main phase, um, and it gives them vigilance, if you have the damage to finish your opponent, by all means, throw it down in your main phase. Just, you know, be careful. <laughs> be very careful. So, moving us down, we do have one copy of a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants. Now, I just really enjoy this card because of the emblem effect. It's uh, certainly not bad in the Knight's deck, um, not bad at all considering we, we play plenty of 1 and 2 drops that are perfectly fine to return to the battlefield, as well as giving our Knights plus 1 plus 1 counters is very nice. And then, you know, the emblem is just, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say it's game winner guaranteed because you're only creating 3 one ones. However, it is very nice, and if we have a Johnny's Welcome, then those 1-1s one are also going to give us life whenever they enter the battlefield, um, you know, and so on and so forth. Moving us down, we have four copies of Conclave Tribunal for some removal and two copies of Ixalan's Bindings for some removal. Now, uh, there's no specific reason for why it's four and two. It's just only have two copies of Ixalan, so, you know, that's uh, that's pretty much it. And then rounding out our deck, we have one copy of Valiant Knight because I only have one copy of Valiant Knight. If you have more, I do recommend you play at least two copies as this. I feel like this card is, is a perfect top ender to your, uh, to your Knight's deck, so... Yeah, that's going to do it for the deck tech or the deck breakdown, and now we're going to hop right into some games. Alrighty, here we are in a game one up against Anima. I think that's Anima. Uh, yeah, that's a fairly okay hand. We have the three mana, which is going to get us to the majority of our cards. Um, Johnny's turn one, Paladin turn two, maybe Dauntless turn three. Sorry, I seem to have something in my eye. Okay. Eyelash stabbing me. Grim Initiate coming down for our foe. So they may be running aggro here, which is really good that we got the Johnny's Welcome. I'm sorry that I'm sitting over here playing with my face. It's just, dear lord, my eyes hurting. Maybe I should wear an eye patch, yeah? Be a pirate for the day. By the way, I should probably mention something, otherwise, I know people are going to be like, yo, how'd you, how'd you go the whole video and not mention the fact that you got your headphones back? Um, yeah, I lost my, my iPhone headphones. Well, I didn't lose them, they're in the car. That was a very lazy way of saying that, you know, I was lazy. <laughs> so, yeah, just didn't feel like going to get him, but that's okay. Dear God, I might have to take a time out and go fix my eye. This hurts. Or at least, like, lean off camera so you don't have to watch me, right? 
Alrighty. Um, we could go ahead and go for Radiant Destiny here. I just don't want to play something and then them immediately shock out my Paladin, but I feel like that's going to be the result regardless. So let's go ahead and get the Radiant down. It's, uh, it's the only card that keeps its value despite everything. Okay, so... No? Alright, well. I'm not going to attack here. Whatever trickery they're planning, I don't want to... Don't want to face it quite yet. Plus, on this next turn, we can get down Dauntless plus Unbreakable, so, you know, might as well wait. And what are we up to? Three, four, five, six. We have six permanents. Next turn, we'll have seven, eight. Okay, so we'll still be two away. Grim Initiate getting a little bit bigger. That's okay. Our Paladin's going to get a little bit bigger as well. Um, we could just play another Paladin plus a Dauntless. That's not terrible. Kind of like that a little bit better than playing the Unbreakable, so... Um, I guess we can try and build our first Paladin up, because we're going to be taking damages, right? Um, so making a big Paladin, like I said, it's not a bad thing. <clears throat> They're just going to take the damage to the face. Pretty much what I expected to happen there. So now we can double block the Grim Initiate if we really want to. Do I? Not really. I'd rather just take the two damage to the face. We know they're not going to swing in with the Judith. Um, so yeah, two, two more damage should be fine. It's going to buff our Paladins up a little bit more. And if we can draw into some more creatures instead of land, um, we will be able to gain some life from a Johnny's Welcome. So now all of our units have Vigilance, so we might as well attack all in. I'm perfectly fine with that trade. <laughs> of course I could always just cast down Unbreakable if they go for the trade. They're not going to, they're going to take the 6 damage and lose their Judith. It's fine by me. We'll take one damage to the face, but uh, all of their units just became immensely weaker. So, yeah, I think we're doing all right here. And we gained, oh, we lost life on our turn because of their Judith, so our, our Paladins actually got a little bit bigger. That's uh, that's kind of nice, not gonna lie. Oh, they had another Judith. Okay, that, that makes a bit more sense. All right, well, let's see what they decide to go for here. No attacks. Okay, so then this is the turn, I believe, that we just unbreakable formation and swing all in with everything. Maybe I want to save it, though. Our knots are already pretty big, big enough to deal with everything. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was thinking about whether or not um, we we're going to need to use Unbreakable here, but because of the Grim Initiate, yeah, so I should have used it prior. Although, that's, well, yeah, because then we lose that trade and they get the token, so yeah, let's just go ahead and throw it down. Again, my mistake there, should have used it before combat, so I would have at least gotten the counter. Okay, so Judith is doing work for them. You know, it might actually be okay in this deck, considering we do have the Paladins. Although, you know, rarely does this happen where you get two Paladins and uh, just stack them up this big. Normally, they get taken out pretty early. But, uh, like I was saying, Gideon's Sacrifice is a one-mana card. Um, could be okay. Could be alrighty. You know what I'd love to see? Another creature. <laughs> that would be fantastic. All right, well, let's swing all in. They got to keep chum blocking, or it's uh, it's gonna be game. So you know, and our knights are still smacking, smacking our opponent around pretty, pretty nicely. Just two two big ass paladins. And honestly, you know, Dauntless is nothing to sneeze at either. Three damage every turn. That's uh, that's a timer. Diagraph ghoul, so is that GG? 
they gotta have something, right? Hey, we got another creature. And it was Banalish Marshall of all things, right? No, they have nothing. Okay, well, game one, Anima, getting smashed with, uh, <laughs> with all three of my knights. And zero Gideons. You know what, MTG? I think you're trolling me. <laughs> it's alright. We'll pick up a Goblin Barrage as our reward for that game. And we'll go ahead and hop into a game two here. Alrighty, here we are up against an opponent whose name I cannot say. Kind of looks like Keith, though. If it was, you know, our alphabet. <laughs> this is uh, this is a pretty strong hand, especially compared to the hand we had last game, and we managed to pull out a victory with that. So, yeah, see, it sort of looks like Keith without the the ah, maybe Keth. You got the the side part of a K and uh, fanatical firebrand, huh? Really, we're we're doing this uh, this aggro type stuff all day. That's okay. Oh, okay. All right. I was wrong. Is it? I, I'll take it back. And they're playing Firebrand in an Is It deck, so that's uh interesting. Sure. Uh, maybe it's Pirates. Ooh, that would be spicy. Maybe we're up against a Pirates deck. Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and get down history. If you're going to bounce my knight, I'll give you something a little bit better. And then next turn we can play our knight. If we draw into a land, that would be just... Mwah. We would uh, we'd get down both of our knights of grace. They would really be in for uh, trouble on the next turn. Unless, of course, they shocked them all out or something like that. And seeing a gutter snipe, you, you definitely got to think that <laughs> they got some shocks in there. Some shocks and some lightning strikes. You know... <laughs> I didn't ask for a third Knight of Grace. I asked for a third or a fourth land so I could play a second Knight of Grace. It's okay, MTG Arena. I know you confuse numbers. That's why you always uh, get the land so screwed, huh? Yeah. I mean, I really should baffling in the gutter site before they get any value out of it. But then I don't get the damage in with the Knight of Grace, so. Man, Gideon's always great to get down. You know, I'm I'm just gonna play responsibly. You know, the the drinking ads for alcohol always tell you to drink responsibly. I'm gonna I'm gonna play responsibly. I'm gonna focus on the things that I should first, like removing that, God, uh, <clears throat> like removing this gutter snipe. I'm trying to get a little bit better about profanity on the channel. Um, so yeah, things things like damn and hell, um probably even ass I'll be alright with but uh, some of the harsher ones I'm gonna try not to say as uh, I, you know try to make it more community friendly as we're moving forward and picking up so much steam but yeah not gonna not gonna cut out cussing completely from the channel or any of that still gonna be me but uh you know maybe not drop the f-bomb as much as I once would uh, and maybe not say GD as much as I once would so I know I know that I have younger people that are starting to watch, so I should be mindful. Uh, <laughs> it's just like giving me everything that I've already had in my hand back over, which isn't terrible, you know. It's not it's not the world's worst thing, but come on. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna go ahead and play our Gideon down here, and I believe we need to give them indestructible. Otherwise, let's see. They block with Enigma Drake plus the Gein two on one, or Gitu on one of them, and then they Firebrand. They lose two units. Well, yeah, they lose two, but keep a Gitu. Or do we just go Life Link and make sure we stay up and ahead? I think Life Link is actually better against these Drake decks. Uh, uh, yeah, because. We're, we should give it lifelink because we can't give our other one indestructible. So if they're gonna kill one, they would just change the target, right? So smart thinking there. <laughs> Cause like we're gonna lose one of them regardless. Cause if we give this one indestructible, they would just focus whatever they were gonna do on the other one. However, if we give one of them lifelink, um, I don't think they have the damage. 
but I, I, I could be seeing something wrong, but I don't think they have the damage. Um, yeah, okay, so they're just gonna... They also did that wrong. <laughs> if they were gonna do that, they should have blocked the Firebrand against the one that was gonna attack with lifelink and then tapped. So that way I wouldn't have gotten the lifelink. So, bit of a mystery as to uh, what went on there, but that's okay. Could could be a new player, you know, just be testing out things. But uh, yeah, so no swing in on my Gideon, and we have a baffling in to take out that Enigma Drake. Plus, we can get down a Knight of Grace. So I think that's the the plan of action here. Oh, and Keith. <laughs> I'm going to call him Keith. Just going to scoop it. Wonderful. Gideon. Knights. Smashing face. What can I say? This deck is uh, its just really fun. It's just so fun. Nonetheless, we'll move on to a game three. Tangy Mahak... Mc... Haggis? Haggis? Tangy McHaggis? It's an odd name. This is a slow start. Oh, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> this the, keeping this could be our downfall here, but uh, it just looks so spicy, right? Oh no. Oh, I mean, on the bright side, that is the fourth land we need for a Johnny. On the downside, it's not a creature, and we're very uh oh no, we're very creature starved here. This is exactly why I was thinking about mulliganing this. So we're already up to five mana, which means we can throw down any any spell in our deck. Um, you know, once we get down the lands. So yeah, just give me zero more lands, game. Oh, and all the removal in the world. <laughs> um, that's okay. It'll come in handy later. I don't know what our opponent's building up to. Oh, are you? Are they playing knights as well, or are they playing legendaries? They could very well be playing Orzhov legendaries. Um, but we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that they're playing knights. So honestly, I think I just Ixalons, right? If they are playing knights, they're probably playing more than one copy of Ariel. If they're playing legendaries, Ixalons not really gonna matter which one we hit it on, as they shouldn't shouldn't have too many copies of any of their legendaries. Regal Blood Lord. Um, well, we we can at least get down a unit. I don't care that Dauntless doesn't have a target. But then I think we just conclave the Blood Lord, right? So they're not playing knights, by the way. Blood Lord tells us that. However, Blood Lord isn't a legendary either, and Ariel isn't a vampire. Okay, so they're gonna get the Ariel back. That's fine. I'd rather them get that back than the Bloodlord, to be completely honest. Bloodlord is just a nuisance for this deck, as it creates a lot of flyers, and this deck can't really deal with flyers that well. Um, don't tell anyone my secret, but. So I think here we just go Knight of Grace into a Radiant and make all of our creatures a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier. Now it also means that our Knight of Grace can deal with their Ariel. Um, Dauntless, you're still a little bit behind, buddy, but uh, that's okay. So next turn we can go a Johnny and buff both of our units. I think that's a fair play. We're also at uh, 5, 7, 8, 9. So the next permanent we play is going to give us Ascension, which gives all of our creatures Vigilance. So Or all of our Knights, rather, but all of our creatures are Knights. So I digress. Tangy, what you doing? Tangy McHaggis. What kind of deck are you playing too, bro? I want to know. I want to know what love is, and I want you to show me. No, oh, just show me something. <laughs> I'm tired of waiting. Ow. Okay, so if they swing in here, then they gotta have some kind of combat trick. No? They have a settle, maybe? What kind of game are you playing? Tangy, that is your real name. I don't think it's Akaya's Wrath. We stand together. 
I mean, subtle is the only thing that I can think that it would be. In which case, ouch, that's gonna hurt. Should I keep a creature back then? Should I just swing in with the Dauntless? I think so. Let's uh, let's test the waters. <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Oh, maybe that was their plan. Just create a two-two and block one of them. Uh, I don't know. That just doesn't seem like a very uh, great plan. I'm not sure what's going on here, but we, we still have the, the mana for shelter and light, so we can still protect one of our creatures if need be. Um, unless they go to exile, of course. Which, Knight of Grace has Hexproof from black. Kai's Wrath still hits him, but, you know, again, we have shelter and light, so... But at least he can't be hit with a Mortify, Cast Down, uh, Murder, all, all of that fun stuff. So we will pass to attackers. Pass to end of combat. So, I guess we just keep stacking the Ajani, right? Oh, and a Gideon. You gotta feel good. You gotta feel real good about yourself. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, dum 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 dum. We're going to give uh, the Dauntless lifelink. And plus one, plus one counters. We could put a plus one, plus one counter on Gideon, but I'm going to keep it to my knights. Um, you are capable of more than you and do we, sh do we just sheltering light here? I mean, what if they just... What if they just exile, right? What if they just settle me? Then I'm going to feel like a doofus. Well, hell, we, we gotta face the music eventually, right? We can't just keep attacking in with one creature. So if they have a settle, let them settle. And I'll keep back my unbreakable. Because we don't need to use it, I suppose. Could have also just given our Dauntless uh, Indestructible. Hmm. Maybe that was the, the smarter route. Since we haven't really taken any damage, we know they're not playing aggro. Well, uh, I guess they're just going to stick with this plan, so they'll probably block the 6-5. Our 5-4 should still get through unless it gets murdered here. Mortify. So there's the sheltering light to block that. No, I don't want another land, actually. Send that to the to the bottom. So Mortify is not going to do anything here. They are going to block the 6-5, and the 5-4 is still going to get through. Dauntless is actually really huge right now. Alrighty, and we'll end our turn on that note. Um, we're looking pretty good. <laughs> we got a pretty solid board state, and it's looking like we're about to go 3-0 with Gideon's Knights. Just, just pummeling people. <laughs> Absolutely destroying. You gotta love it, right? You gotta love Mono White, and it's, it's just raw strength. It's raw strength and its ability to keep your units alive. That's, uh, so good, so powerful. Tangy, come on, buddy. You draw one card every turn, and I'm sure that one card doesn't change uh, change the board that much. And if it does, hey, you you should know how to play it right then, yeah. And I get some people have things going on, or they may be watching streams, you know, while they play. It's just uh, as a content creator, and I'm sure you've seen all content creators. So the unfortunate thing is we we spent our mana, right? We spent our our sheltering light, so. We are going to lose all of our creatures here, however we're going to keep our Gideon. So we will at least have him. And interestingly enough, as I pointed out last turn, we can uh, we can still put counters on Gideon. And though we don't really want to select anything with his first thing, as it doesn't work, uh, we can still use it so as to buff him. Now, Ajani is at a big enough level that we can put the emblem out however i think we're gonna wait one more turn Ooh, we may not be able to wait one more turn we'll have to see if we can get a creature here where's off lock it hmm well they are playing for sinking sanctuaries as well so maybe their their lands aren't the best oh, speaking of lands and not being the best <laughs> um we could just get back a knight of grace with a johnny here or we can minus the johnny and just get some some cats going every single turn 
I kind of like getting back the Knight of Grace, though. Back on your feet. Back on your feet. Alright, so. Knight of Grace can deal with Ariel. Uh, indestructible, I guess. It doesn't really matter there. Gideon can swing in for five more. So they either block it or they go down to six. They're going down to six. Fantastic. Fantastico. And we do still have both our Gideon and the Johnny. And next turn, if we want to exile a creature with Gideon and just sweep out the game, I think we can if they don't play another unit here. Um, which, hell, we may just be able to, to win even if they do have another unit here with Unbreakable plus a Johnny. They're digging deep. They are digging deep. We might we might go three and zero here. Tangy might be uh, our third victory in a row. Sorry, I'm I'm in this like aggro state where I'm like go 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 because we're playing a very aggro deck and it's been winning very quick games. Um, and Tangy just scoops it. Uh, I was gonna say, but then then we hit this opponent who's just like playing very slow and like, hmm, how can I how can I think to come back from this? So props to him for at least sticking it out and trying his best or their best rather I should say. Nonetheless, that's gonna do it for this video. I'll either see y'all tonight or tomorrow. And as always, peace.